recording? Can, do you mind just, uh, yeah, just so we can see the time. Welcome to episode number two of uh, this book, uh, The Digital Minimalism by Cal Newport. Yeah. This book uh, is becoming a TED very quick. Oh, yeah. It's, oh, uh, no more five scale of one to oh, five. Oh, sorry, we're doing scale to one to five, right? It's yeah. going to be a five, even a 5.5 5 on five. Five pieces of bacon? Five pieces of bacon already. That that's a new scale. I, I like bacon it. strips. Yeah. The um, did you guys delete Facebook? I did. Yeah. We deleted it on air last last week. The morning Didn't of. You? I've uh, I've had it deleted for a few weeks now. Or oh, you deleted the morning of. Morning of, and then you did it live. I did it live. Live. Interesting. You, you like want to tell me? It? No. Still Come on. Come on, Felix. I can't do it. Can you pass me that brown envelope there real quick? So, uh, what have you guys noticed with... Um, Can I mention this? Yeah, let's talk about that before. So, we did uh, Daniel Pink's book, When? Yep. The last book club. And in there, uh, you can send him an email and he'll send you an autograph book plate. So, I finally got this yesterday. So, it's pretty cool. So, Chris, what is a book plate? Uh, it's just this. A senior? Or No, it's is just it? a, a sticker. Oh, okay. Oh, it's a sticker? Right? Yeah, it's a sticker for your book. So that's really cool. He autographed it. So I guess if you go to like a signing session, uh, they probably give these out if you really? forget the book. So, yeah, the guy is true to his word. He sent it to me. and uh, That's unbelievable. It's pretty cool. What a great yeah. author. Yeah, what a sure. great gay. What a great gay. I have gay. supper with him. Yeah, I'd have dinner <laughs> with him. It's pretty yeah. cool. I would like to have dinner with authors. Yeah. For sure. We know a few authors. Do we? Oh, yeah, we do. Charles Labois. Oh, you know one too. Brock Frost. Brock, yeah. I, I, Brock is one of the people I would yeah. love to, I, I like having dinner with, for sure. Yeah, yeah for sure. He's yeah. a great guy. Um, you know what? So, deleting Facebook has uh, it actually got me... So, I would check Facebook maybe once or twice per day on my computer since I deleted it. Yeah. And every time I would check it, it's honestly, it's becoming more useless. So, the less active <laughs> I am on it, yes. the less... Uh, the, the less the, the last love I have for it, I think. But, I agree. Yeah. But we need it for marketing. Like, y- you need it for marketing, man. You need to make posts. You need yeah. to like. You need to comment. So that's if you sp- if you dedicate one, like, maybe 10, 15 minutes per day on it, you Well, that, that's one thing that he brought up was, well, what if we need to do a Facebook Live for our new uh, listings? Well, we just download it the morning of and then shoot our live video and delete it. Just being organized. Yeah. Purposeful. Or, yeah, exactly. Right. Um, I checked Facebook yesterday. I had... F- like 40 some notifications four or five are relevant the yeah, rest were yeah. just things i liked and they're giving me updates of other people that commented it's like i don't care man yeah. i think that facebook maybe knows that you haven't checked in in a while and it's like sending you a ton of notifications yeah did we get those notifications even before I don't know. yeah well i did i did just not as much and man it's annoying yeah like, it is yeah um, so, it is. so do you think like you said, you would you would download Facebook the morning of. Well, or a couple uh, right? of minutes before, yeah, yeah. Th- yeah, a couple of minutes before, and then do it. So you're you're using it uh, in a practical way. You're not yeah. using it obsessively. Like yeah. the Amish. Right, um, and he talks about you know he would, um, he talks about Cal Newton does about um, you know talking to his sister in Japan on Facetime. Yeah, like Facetime is an app that you can use and you can talk to people around the world on and WhatsApp. Yeah. app. So those are not apps that I would delete off my phone because it's so convenient. Yeah, and we're gonna jump into that, like apps that you need to delete or don't. Like I think if it, if it's this disruptive, you know, delete it. If not, then you don't need to delete it. You know, like I'm not gonna delete. Do you wanna get it? Get you wanna get into it now? I feel like it's the elephant in the room. I think we should. Yeah. But like you know, we were comparing how many apps are left on my phone, and you said, well, you just put them all in a folder. Yeah, I did. Like I have apps for business. Like. I'm not going to delete my e-key service because I need it for listing or showing sometimes. Okay. So it's in there and I have Doc yeah. Scanner. Like, so I'm going to delete, delete it. So last week we had a challenge to, you know, keep call, emails, and text. And then we had the right to keep five apps. Right. How many apps do you have on your phone right now? We said three, no? I probably have about 40 apps. Yeah. I probably have about 40 apps. Same. I, I have two pages. Um, so we've got 16, 16... Yeah. Plus six. So, I mean, listen, like my, my email app is on there, obviously, yeah. and I still have my 
like my alarm app, my uh, Uber app, my realtor.ca app, my sign now app. You know, there's a lot of apps that I can probably still get rid of, but I haven't. But wasn't the question uh, apps that you can't live without? So as far as Uber, that's important. Maps, that was important. Your banking app, that's... Good. I deleted my banking app. Okay. Yeah. That's I, a move, man. I thought about it and I said, fuck, if I'm going to be uh, responsible, that's fiscally responsible, I need to look at my banking when I'm you know, at my desk, mm. like thinking and just organizing things. But there's no reason for me to have access to my banking on the go. That's another yeah. crutch. It is. It's, it's a waste of time, you think. Yeah. It's a waste of energy. Yeah. I think all of this comes down to waste of mental energy. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Like yeah. every time you check your Facebook, it's a waste of mental energy. And uh, I deleted a lot of stuff. All my games are gone. What it's about you, Chris? How, how many apps have you deleted? Uh, a bunch, but like I, I how cleaned many apps my have you, phone. Have you, apps in the, have you consolidated it to one folder? How many apps <laughs> do you still have on your phone? <laughs> a lot. But like. they're not apps that I'll check my phone for. Right. They're there if I need them. But apps that I can't live without, I was trying to think, like, I thought I thought we had said three apps that, you know, can't live without besides phone that's messaging. That's definitely not what we said. So that's what I did. So yeah. nonetheless, that's what I did. Yeah. You want to talk about that as, as well? No, that's have fine. Daddy issues you want to talk about? <laughs> yeah, you, you know what? Though, I, don't, I don't know why you got to make it personal. I'm just so saying you didn't follow the... GPS. I need my GPS. Yeah, I kept that one. Like your, yeah. your Google Maps? Yeah. What are, are your top three apps right now? So GPS, calendar. I said Spotify, but like when we walked, when we first started talking earlier, I asked the question: Is contacts a given? Because or else I don't know anyone's number anymore. So contacts, I think contacts, phone, and text or email is a given, right? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So yeah, GPS, calendar, Spotify, are three apps that I would definitely keep on my phone. Okay. Other than that. You like I'm, I'm thinking for my personal life and business. If I can keep those, I'm okay. The rest is just fluff. Spotify is the music app, right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Do you listen to podcasts on that too? Uh, no. I'll listen to a lot of comedy and music. So you still have your podcast app. You still have your iBooks app that you. Well, use, right? Spotify, you can listen to to podcasts. For some reason, I listen to podcasts on iTunes, but like I same here. Yeah, I don't know why I don't use Spotify for podcasts. But you yeah. know what, though? One thing we are forgetting and he talks about is um, email subscriptions, like news. You know how you get news in your email, in your email inbox? Like you can get yeah. the New York Times or Hustle or whatever it's called. Um, do you guys have that? Are you subscribed to any of them? Nothing. No, I downloaded the app he talks about, uh, News something. Yes, I know what you're talking about. It's called. New, well, it's, it's just called News. So they have three articles of something that happened yeah, one so one from the left side right side and one that i don't think it's called more news. balanced it's called something else it's well called all sides i think yeah really? it's called all sides yeah. That's oh cool. actually no uh, i think this was just added to the phone yeah news is added to the phone i think it's called all sides all sides yeah you're right you're right, you're right. where do you guys get your news right now <sighs> all sides that's honestly right now i'm not getting it from anywhere and it feels great like with all the flooding that's going on People talk about it anyways. So. I know. It's crazy. Yeah. I just, so um, I tune into uh, Philly D. Oh, yeah, yeah, Philip, yeah. Philip DeFranco. Yeah. Once a day. Yeah. He talks about whatever's going on. It's 15 minutes long. And he's long. pretty. Uh, he's neutral. Neutral, yeah. If he, uh, if he thinks that, you know, somebody's being a dick, he'll say it. Yeah. He'll give his opinion. Who is this? But he reports neutrally. Uh, Philly D. So Philip DeFranco. Okay. He's a pretty big YouTuber. I think he's got like 6 million subscribers. Yeah. Give or take. And you listen to a podcast? No, like it's a like a daily vlog, 15 to 20 minutes long. Okay. He tries to cover everything that's important. Sports, politics, technology, all that stuff. Internet news. It's on YouTube. It's on YouTube. Okay. And um, it sort of became a ritual over the past few months. Just when I get home, I listen to Philly D and that's all I need for news. I don't mm. feel disconnected from the world, but at least it's an unbiased source. Mm. Makes sense. Yeah. That's not bad at all. So you listen to one news outlet. Pretty much. You listen to one news outlet as well. Well, I, I, I listen to, to him sometimes, but... Uh, it's weird because I just went on the... past two weeks, I haven't been 
watching or listening to anything. Because you dropped Facebook. Yeah. Facebook okay, yeah. was like the number one source. and It's probably the gone. worst source of news ever because oh, yeah, you can yeah, yeah. easily get distracted. Yeah. Like you're, you want, one, you know, you're watching poor countries getting demolished and then the next post after that is some dude trying to fight another woman or man in a club. Yeah. Yeah. It's, you know, it's so weird. And they use your your human, uh, I don't know, tendency towards stuff that makes you angry. Because we're always looking out for the next problem. Right. Right? Yeah. And if they can sort of say, hey, shock value. there's a problem here, they're going to be like, what the hell's going on here? It this fucking guy said that. <laughs> and you get, like, angry. You know, one thing that he said in this is, um, in this book, that really resonated with me, your brain cannot differentiate between a conversation that you're having with someone face to face and a text message. So it's automatically when, when you get a, you, when you get a text message from somebody and you have an emotional reaction to that text message. Okay. It's th- your brain cannot recognize the difference. So yeah. now your brain is associating anything that you read that provokes an emotional attachment. So whether it's on Facebook, whether it's on Instagram or text messages or whatever as a face to face uh, emotional okay provocation, but right? it so does it does affect people who uh, who who are addicted to um, social media and then when they do have a face-to-face conversation they're having a hard time reading someone's emotions yeah like facial expression exactly makes for so if let's say you go to Timmy's and and it's a younger person the cash sometimes they seem rude it's maybe because it's just they have no fucking clue how to read your face they're socially awkward i did um i did write something down about that how whenever i'm out at a restaurant or dealing with a younger uh, cash clerk like rahel's age no rahel's <laughs> pretty much our age she's uh yeah yeah i'm just kidding it's just because i saw her look over <laughs> i'm just um yeah people like in their early 20s it's they're not mean. They're just it's different. I don't know. It's just a different, different. Era, a different And he talks about this, like the the generation that grew up with constant connection. They're iGen. Yeah, they're just nineteen ninety five to two thousand. Yeah. 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 So when you get to your preteens and you have access to iPhones, iPads and um, constant internet connectivity. You're they're socially awkward. We had we remember how it was. Yeah. You know? We remember how it was. They talk about, sorry, I didn't mean to cut no, you off, but they talk about phone phobia. Yeah. Do you remember when you had to call your friend and you had to talk to their mom for 20 minutes before you were able to reach out to yeah. your oh, buddy? You would, you, would page, you would page them 911 <laughs> and then wait relentlessly or patiently on the, next to your parents' phone to, to get a phone call? You had a pager? Um, I had a pager. I had a pager for like a year. I had a pager for like two months. <laughs> then I realized the only people that were calling me was Marty, my grandmother, and my mom. <laughs> I was one of the first kids in high school to have a phone, and I would charge people uh, a toonie to make a call uh, during a the toonie. Yeah. Wow, you're a lawyer. You're, you're <coughs> making some coin, man. Yeah, it was pretty good. That's awesome. And they would just place calls to we'll place call calls. Call that all. <laughs> hey, man. You got the goods. Entrepreneurial. It was cheaper just to instincts. go to a payphone. Yeah. <coughs> well, no. Cheaper to use. Yeah, to use a payphone. To course. use a payphone. Yeah. Yeah. You were scamming people. Um, I was listen, charging man, people. This is state of the art technology. It's a Telus mic. I was, I was yeah. trying. It was a. Doo 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 doo. Yeah. You remember those? Yeah. They I was were charging lo- people a dollar for a cigarette. So. <laughs> there you yeah, go. I'm thinking, oh, you know what? <laughs> what about your what worse. about your um, your your camera? Your camera is a great app on your phone. It's one of the best features on. Your yeah, phone. but I'm I'm not big on taking pictures. Or, mm. I don't know what percentage, but there's a large percentage of photos on my. Uh, camera roll that are memory aids yeah they're okay. like yes. stuff that i see i'm like oh i can't forget yeah. this oh i parked my car here i can't forget that That's yeah right. yeah yeah me too you know me too i i so use it a lot to like we had a we had a volunteer seminar on saturday okay and this lady walked in uh younger and she basically walked in her phone up in the air in front of her face i opened the door for her and i'm like hi she didn't even say hi to me. She's like, she stared at me. And I'm like, are you, are you here for the volunteer uh, session? She said, uh, yes. And then I'm like, okay, just go upstairs. And she just went upstairs. No conversation. No nothing. Just hmm. blank. Can I have a Kleenex next to you over there? Just a blank face. Nothing, man. And it was just so, um, it was just so weird. 
But, you know, you can't just attack the younger generation too because anyone that's addicted to their phones or, I mean, I'm, I'm part, I, well, I was part of that, I think, where if you have your phone and you're distracted, you'll, you'll forget what's going on around you. It's normal. I, my mom's on her phone all the time. It's like, not normal, she does. Normal. Uh, no, what I wanted to say is it's normal to always be fearful of younger generations and, um, you know, saying they're weird. There's actually a term for that. It's called uh, juvenoia. No. It's when an older generation is, you know. Yeah, you learned uh, that on, uh, what is it? A Vsauce. Yeah. yeah. Michael. They had here. a good episode I on I love that, that guy. So the fear of a younger generation is very common. It's it's always been around. Um, when printing presses came out, the parents were saying all the kids are doing these days is reading books. Yeah. And they're not socializing. When Shakespeare started pl- putting out plays, people were like, you know, people are always at the theater. They're not interacting with each other. Mm. When the phone came out, mm. parents were saying, listen, these kids are losing the ability to write good letters. They're not going to know how to operate in this world. Right. So we got to be conscious that as human beings, we're always sort of looking at the next generation. And this is not a new phenomenon. It's always been like that. Mm-hmm. But we also got to realize that social media is... It's much more, you know, constant than a, a, a play by Shakespeare. So there is a difference. So there's, I've never gone into so many arguments in my entire life until uh, as much as I do on like social media or texting or whatever. Like, like somebody would post like, uh, Donald Trump is a loser. Oh, no, no, he's not a loser. Yes, he is a loser. Blah, blah, blah. Right. And, and so now when you're having these conversations with the millennials or the, what, what is it, what is it called? The Y generation, whatever. I gen. I gen. They are, I feel like they're always in this argumentative state of mind, right? Like they, they, they've lost, this is, I have a younger brother and it's really hard to have a conversation with him and criticize his opinion or criticize his state of mind at this, at this point, because he'll, he'll completely like, he'll take it to heart. They're, he uh, good debaters some but would say they're master debaters <laughs> <laughs> they're uh, you see you insulate yourself with people that think the same as you when you're on social media yeah so i think there's always a protective bubble of the same opinion you're building like small tribes and it's wise to explore outside you know maybe talk with somebody who's got a freaking different opinion than you mm-hmm. you know and try to grow as a human being as opposed to just locking yourself in in that this is the way I think and screw anybody who thinks differently. Well, it's just that once people realize that they have such a, their, th- their thoughts also have a, lo- you know, a large following, it's more motivation. It's validation, validation, more, validation, right? validation. It's validation, exactly. Yeah. Oh, I think this, oh, that guy thinks that too. Yeah. Like I, oh, and there's another guy. Like there's a picture that's, you know, a lady that's half naked or a girl that's you know 17 years old that's half naked and she takes a picture of herself and puts it on like nobody's going to shame her on social media but people are going to say oh good job great job it's like like i disagree with that you're you're you you know you shouldn't be just posting these pictures on social media and then people are validating it for her right it's it's i find that wrong like it's it shouldn't be like that you shouldn't be using social media to promote um your body know and that's uh, and i think it's 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 opening up to that like crazy and it's getting worse and worse yeah i can't tell you how many times i get notifications or friend requests from like random people yeah yeah that not not, i don't know that but they're obviously soliciting you know we're not meant to have that big of a social network it's just uh there's a number called the dunbar number and we talked about it last time yeah and we're not supposed to know really well more than like 150 people give or take yeah and we're not supposed to be getting the validation from 150,000 people <laughs> well exactly. we were talking about iGen um, that's why the rise of anxiety cases has gone up to like big time. you know yeah. big they're more time. depressed and, and, and anxious than any other group before suicide count is up yeah. maybe know, we have a reason to be juvenile what is it juve uh, s- feelings of uh, juvenoia. Juvenoia. Maybe we have good reason for juvenoia. There's right. a really good. Um, there's a really good video by Vsauce, Michael Stevens. I'm gonna take a look at that. And uh, maybe we could post it in the description of uh, this YouTube uh, upload. Rahel, could we do that? Thank you. Um, yeah, it's freaking. It's, it re- it re- it's really really good. Every generation is thinking that the next generation is is screwed up. But I have a feeling this is different. 
I'm sure that but I think you know, when the phone well, came out, they the parents were like, about, ah, yeah. you know, I know that every generation. Yeah, but they're smarter than any other. Uh, they're smarter than any other uh, generation. It's just yeah. some, some getting used to. So they're, they're also talking about how um, technology and social media is the new um, processed food. You know, how it created um, all these uh, weight problems and health problems. And now we're just in this new problem that we have to deal with. In the 80s and 90s, when I was back in my day, when I was growing up, fast food wasn't looked at as a, you know, a huge problem. No, no. It was just like it's delicious food at a yeah. low cost and it's fast so service. And yeah. we, have so know. we have access to so much information now, though. Yeah. Studies are coming out of nowhere, you know. <laughs> this <laughs> thing is problem. healthy. This thing is unhealthy. This thing is, and every study is goes viral. Yeah, and there's troll studies these days. Yeah, there's people that just invent stuff just to throw it out there because it sounds <coughs> interesting. Like there's so many things wrong with social media, but there's so many things that are just fantastic. Yeah, 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 for sure. It's for a great sure. tool. Um, um, was he? I was just gonna say. Uh, Maybe we should talk about the uh, spending time alone part. Yeah. How important that is. Um, yeah. Because walks. there is a thing that he calls, well, it's called solitude deprivation. Yeah. How we're never, ever, well, har hardly ever alone anymore. We're and even connected. when you're alone, you have someone else's mind conflicting your ideas, whether it's on Facebook, whether it's Instagram, whether it's email whatever so, so you're never really truly alone yeah so every moment alone what is it the default it's like a default setting in your brain yes it's a called uh, something default you know what i'm talking about chris um yes uh the uh i wrote it here Do -do -do -do. something default there's the like a default network default so network. when you're alone your your brain starts thinking when you're not doing anything there's a part of your brain that ignites and starts uh, you start makes you think about yourself and other people, so it's right. a social part of your brain that yeah. that clicks. We're a, we're a very social animal. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So what do you do to um, like what do you, what do you do for solitude? What would you do? I'm I'm lucky to be able to spend a lot of time driving. As much as I hated it before, now I use it as time to think. Can I grab that red folder? And sometimes I'll even shut off my my radio, just open up the windows and. Just listen to nothing, really. Mm -hmm. Just be alone with my thoughts. Because other than that, where else are you going to be able to do that? Marty? I uh, started this routine this week. Um, just I always get up. Another but routine. So um, right now what I, I just added on to that is if I'm up at 4, I don't turn on my phone till 5. So I'm alone in my condo just doing my dishes, my laundry. And my mind does not shut up for a second. It's it's kind of worrying, and I want to I want to turn the TV on. I want to turn on you know a podcast just so I can drown out those um, those thoughts. And like it's crazy. There you don't realize it until you try to spend some time in total silence. Mm. Um, that is so crazy. I don't know. If there's something wrong with me, but like it's I don't like think there's something wrong with man. You. Things are just like flying at me. It's like oh, what about this? What about that? Mm -hmm. Oh, this problem. Wow, this like you know, and it's yeah. like um, I don't know. I I think it's probably very healthy to have some time where you've got zero sound, zero input. Um, you're still doing chores, you know. I'm not sitting there like a monk. That's yeah. not what I'm saying. You know, I've got my laundry, my dishes to do. Yeah, you can do stuff, but without any distraction uh, other than what you're doing i'm probably one of the worst people for like always have having something on i always want like have you, white noise like what are you thinking about uh just problems for work you know worrying about uh how, how are sales gonna go this month you know what are we gonna do this year um a lot of work stuff yeah to be honest so work is constantly on your mind yeah, yeah. definitely yeah, that's. I think it's like that for all entrepreneurs. Yeah. And, all and do you people. do you can you relate to what they're saying? Where when you're not doing anything, you think about other people. Yeah. You you just prove that you're thinking about yourself. Yeah. Right. Like Definitely. It, yeah. 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 I mean, we're salespeople, so yeah. obviously when I'm thinking about work, I'm thinking about yeah. clients and you know, yeah, agents and stuff like that. So yeah, yeah. it's. Do you guys all have siblings? Yeah. Yeah. 
Yeah. So yeah, I love. I was. I grew up an only child. Yeah. I love being alone. I love the quiet. <laughs> yeah. I feel like super at peace when I'm just at home doing nothing or doing chores around the house. Yeah. Do you have like music playing in the background? I, just, I don't want anything. I think that's very healthy. And people it's probably that, a very wise choice. Um, I've dated in the past or friends that I've hung out with. They think it's weird. They can't. Like, to them, they, like, have to have some kind of distraction. Yeah. And it drives me crazy. Like, I can't handle yeah. that. Yeah. That's cool. I need to work on that. That's Having alone my... time um, has proven to be quite beneficial in our history. They talk about Abe Lincoln, how he would travel on his horse back and forth every day from the White Horse to, uh, what do they call the cottage? The um, The White House. Uh, white, ho- white. What did I say? White horse. Oh, that's the restaurant. <laughs> the white house to uh, the cottage there. Cabin um, of solitude. Was he ever alone though? I mean, he was the president. But that's that's what they say. He so the his alone time was on his horse. Even when there was threat of him being assassinated, he would s- and he got shot at once or twice. They say. Right. Um, but his horse ride to his cottage. It's the uh, war vet cottage now. Yeah. 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 So. Um, he would use that time to think, and even when he was at home, even if he had like servants or uh, maintenance people, or he was saying like um, his family, kids, whatever, he would be alone in his office just thinking. And then when he went back to the white, uh, white horse, white house, he'd be fresh. Okay. Same thing for Martin Luther King. Yeah. Um, he took well one the, the what they describe as the most important night of his life. So when he was alone, thinking about, you know, okay, everyone needs me to be this type of person, um, so that's what I'm going to be. That that decision of him being who we know him for um, happened when he was alone in his kitchen, just thinking. Yeah, it was like the the most amazing night of his life. Or something. Yeah, the, the most. Point. Yeah, that's so interesting. Being alone doesn't mean being alone; it just means taking some time off and thinking by yourself. And not having other minds influencing yours. Yeah. There's um, there's this trait that we see a lot in, you know, people that we describe as great leaders. Yeah. I always heard, you know, Steve Jobs, he only had six top people in his company that he only wanted to interact with. Right. And that was it. Yeah. You know, and he even talks about it in the book a bit later on that every single day he would have, you know, his walk Walks. around the yeah. California hills. And if you were in his close circle and you wanted to meet with him, that's when you would go. You know, walk with when Steve. he would invite you for a walk, you, you knew you're in for a fucking good conversation. So let me ask you guys something. One way to to sort of control your thoughts when you're alone is to write. Yeah. And Cal Newton talks about him writing. It was he wasn't writing every day, but he would write on ra- documenting or document. writing letters to himself. I know a good friend of mine that write, has been writing down his thoughts every single day since he was a teen, and he noticed trends of when he was feeling down and when he was feeling happy again right so now he's able to control his thoughts and sort of um you know not get too happy or too sad at times and just stay stable yeah you still do that i am pretty much every day uh a few times a week yeah at least and i've got journals going back to like 2003 Mm. i want to do that it's just really hard yeah Ah. You just start writing. Most days are going to be I'd be like afraid to go back. Most days are going to be like, what's yeah. this, like March 27th. Like, yeah, a few times a week I'll write down what I'm thinking. And, uh, yeah, you do notice a trend. Okay. And if I go back like 10 years and I read stuff back then, I'm worrying about the same type of shit. Okay. So it's like it's sort of comforting to, to be like, okay, you're worrying about these problems, right? It has not come to pass. So why are you still worrying, worrying about, about it? Because ninety nine like percent of the stuff that you worry about will never come to pass. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So writing has definitely been a good tool. And he he talks about writing a letter to yourself. Yeah, that's essentially what it is. I've you're done that already. You're writing a letter to your future self. Yeah. Have you found it beneficial? I read it every morning. So you wrote a letter to yourself and you read it every morning. Okay. And uh, it's a. Uh, uh, Brock gave me the the idea, um, so it's one letter to my f- to myself when I'm 40 years old. Huh. I want to be able to read that letter when I'm 40 years old and everything that I've written in that letter to be true. That's wild. Hmm. 
Yeah. I did. Uh, it's like a, it's like a, I'm, I'm listing my goals. I didn't that's do cool. s- something um, that intense, and I think that's a great idea. But when I was single a um, few years ago, and I was just tired of being single, I wrote a letter about the perfect girl, and uh, I read it, um, you know, I guess it was like a year ago, and it described uh, Marie-Pierre. That's romantic. Yeah. It's, uh, that's really just cute. Yeah. So like did you read it to her? No. I think it's at Pressland. I think it's in that hmm. box of stuff that's left underneath the gazebo. Anyways, I need to go get it. It's 10.30 something now, eh? Yeah, we got to wrap this up. Can we finish with just one thing? Yes, sir. Solitude deprivation. I know we talked about it, but just reading what that means mm-hmm. just makes you realize how never alone we are. It's a pretty never. powerful <laughs> word. Pretty fa- powerful saying, eh? A state in which you spend close to zero time alone with your own thoughts and free from input from other minds. That's really right. So I'm going to book myself um, a session in that deprivation tank. Have well, you ever tried I that? Did that? It's so cool. I, I did not like it. No? No. Uh, the first time I, I, I thought it was, I liked it, but I didn't enjoy it. Second time I enjoyed it a little bit more. Third time I fell asleep. But I would wake up not knowing that I'm awake. I didn't know if I was still dreaming. And I'd fall back asleep. It was such a weird thing. Where is it? Where can you bank. do it? It's on the uh, Off Bank. A- bank and Flora. It's oh. called the What's ISO Spa. What is it? Uh, is it an hour? An hour. So you, you're just floating in this tank in pitch black. You don't feel your body. It's good for, for sore muscles. and But uh, what it does to your mind is just... Yeah. insane we're uh mp and i are going tuesday evening so if you guys there's three rooms five five so we're going tuesday mm. around six thirty. so you got you you book ahead of time yeah yeah i have to or else uh, they get pretty sold out but uh, uh, it's pretty cool the benefits of those rooms like it's just it's so cool okay i'm gonna try that it's out. not for everyone it i mean it's 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 so is this something you're gonna do once a week no, because it can get costly. But like once in a while, like even if it's once a month, that float that is probably hour, like forty bucks. Yeah, but it's still they have, uh, forty bucks. All the time, I think, so. yeah, yeah, they have deals. It's it's you can cool buy like a five pack. Yeah, it's like one ninety nine or something like that. But it, it's an hour of being in pitch black, floating, not feeling the weight of your body, and just there is there even sound. There's a little bit of music at first, first but then it's like complete silence, pitch black. What if I want to get out? You can you just, just push, push the door. Oh, okay. You can leave the light on, but the first yeah, the first time like leave the light on, just close your eyes. Okay, I'm done. But then just you can just get out. Yeah, give it a shot and get just me out. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> give it a I shot and, it and do it pitch black. Like that, but uh, I freaked so out the first time. It's yeah. so dark that you start seeing colors and patterns. Yeah. Like yeah. it's messed up, man. But it's it's so it's uh, very salty. Rewarding at the end. It's very salty too. Yeah. What do you mean? How, why, why would you taste the water? Well, it's just, you sweat and you have, your, anyways, oh. you have to try splash it out. around, just try it out, you try it out. Um, yeah. A lot, a lot of things can happen in that one hour while you're there alone, man. So you can think about. Maybe we'll bring her help since she ditched us for today. Water. That's funny. There's Good a stuff, spray right. bottle. Would you do that, in there bro? So you could spray your, your face if ever salt gets in your eye. Okay. So okay. it's good, and uh, yeah, you've okay. got. Jason Grant there, ISO spot. What's the, uh, it's so weird that I have this just in my book. <laughs> Isospa.ca. Yeah, these guys are great. Mika and Jason. Nice guys. She's actually a realtor. Okay. Yeah. I think uh, the challenge for next week, we should, uh, you should go out to dinner with somebody you've never been out to dinner with. Cool. That's what I think you should do. Barack Obama. <laughs> Barack. <laughs> hey, yeah. Uh, Hey, Barack, you available next week? <laughs> <laughs> well, he's coming to Ottawa. He's coming to Ottawa. I Is it like $300 to go, to go see him? $70? $70? No, really? oh, that's not bad. I'll I'm totally go see him. Yeah, I'm going to go see him. 100%. All right. Only all good, see? Yes. Um, we are going to mm-hmm. finish the book. We're going to power yep. through it. Yep. Um, so that's about 100 pages. About, yeah. Do we know if anyone reached out for a free uh, bookmark? No, we'll have to look. Oh, no comments on it. So keep on listening, people. 
I know, I know where <laughs> we know you're out there somewhere. Yeah, there's a few. Somebody's uh, enjoying this. <laughs> there's a few. Uh, there's a few of you listening. Uh, don't be shy to comment. Just say I want some bacon, and we'll ship you a I bookmark. Bacon. Cool. Okay, fuck you next week to the end. Fuck. Uh, Merci. If you have any recommendations for the next book we should read, let us know. Cal Newport is a, is a young guy, eh? Oh, actually, they do talk about a book that maybe we should look into. Solitude? Uh, by solitaire. That, by that uh, Sherry Turkle? It's playing solitaire as a p- form of solitude. The author of Reclaiming Conversation? Is that the one you're talking about? Mm, 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 mm. Uh, I wrote it down somewhere. You know, in the book, when, he does recommend a few good books in there. Yeah. It's really cool uh, reading a book that's like brand new. Yeah, hundred percent. I like uh, that. Well, I, I think we should we should focus oh, on brand new lead books. Lead yourself first. And who wrote that? Raymond Ketledge and Michael Irwin co-wrote "Lead Yourself First. Let's do it. That Jason Raymond. It'd be cool and if we keep with the same subject mm-hmm. and like self care. I think it's really cool. I, I mean, can prove it. Just this Facebook thing has proven to be beneficial. I you guys prefer this intro or outro as opposed to the other one? I don't know. I thought it was the same song. No, this one's a bit slower. It's a little slower. It's more uh, fitting. But you can just change it up every week. No, it's got to be Bang. consistent. Two. This one's it's got a good beat. Christian. Let's find a jazz bar. Happy birthday to Chris. Oh, thank you. Bad fight, Kriket. Let's see. He's 33? Yeah. Oh, wow. We are logging out. He's a Taurus. Have a yeah. good, <laughs> good week. Bonne semaine tout le monde.